Hello friends, let us learn about the treatment aspects involved in gastric carcinoma. The major treatment aspect is there is no medical treatment for gastric carcinoma. It is always surgery. So in this less in this less chapter we will learn about the surgical aspects which are involved in um gastric surgery uh, surgical aspect which are involved in gastric cancer so um if you have to see it is really important that uh, patients with incurable disease will never ever be subjected to radical surgery only and only if we know that the uh disease is curable only then we generally put the patient or post the patient to operation so we will have to uh, look or see uh, or detect the involvement of any other organs uh, along with uh, the stomach if there are, if there is involvement of other organs then it does not Uh, we cannot say that uh, it cannot be curable but if the organ is removed like for example if liver is involved in the stomach we have found out through ultrasound that uh, liver is involved and liver function tests have been deranged then what we do is we don't put the patient under palliative therapy but we generally put the patient uh, under surgery and we remove the liver part of the liver which is involved Right, so that is the best treatment. Uh, so, oh, when do you classify a person to be palliative surgery, or when do you classify a person to be normal uh, gastric surgery? That generally depends upon the extent of spread. Even uh, in Japan, if you see. even there is surgery performed for n3 nodal metastasis even when uh, more than 15 regional nodes have been involved that is n3 even then the surgery is performed so it generally depends upon the patient uh, condition and the doctor's experience right so let us learn about the surgeries which are done for uh, the a tumor of the stomach and then we will see the lymph node stations and what do you do for those lymph node station involvement right so first surgery is just pertain just which are uh, limited to stomach first okay surgery is of gastric tumor so it is generally divided into two types i know there are many controversies you know especially um, i don't know about the controversies worldwide but if you see books you know in our in my srb the edition which i have uh, it has included three types of gastrectomy that is lower radical gastrectomy upper radical gastrectomy and total radical gastrectomy but uh, i don't know what the other books have involved uh, but i am just following uh, bailey and love for this uh, surgeries of gastric tumor completely because i don't want to confuse myself uh and i don't want others uh to get confused because of different books and different things so this surgical aspect which i am discussing right now is in bailey and love which i know it is a standard book of surgery uh so i don't know about the other words which were used so i'm completely depending upon bailey and love um it is the it is an old edition not the new edition uh so if you have any if there is any change in the new edition just please inform me please comment it in the comment section okay guys so let's go through the uh, surgeries of gastric tumors so there are uh, basically two types right now it is according to bailey and love purely so number 1 if the tumor is involving the uh, body and the antrum if the if the tumor is involving the body or upper part of the stomach or anywhere in the which is nearer to the upper part of the stomach that is one and number 
if the tumor is involving only the pylorus okay if the tumor is involving only the pylorus so these are the major two things even if the tumor is involving only the upper part of the stomach even then we do uh, total gastrectomy so here if the tumor is involving upper part body or the whole part of the stomach then you do total gastrectomy if the tumor is involving the lower uh, uh, pylorus then we do subtotal gastrectomy these are the terminologies which are given in uh, bailey and lau whereas in srb this is given as radical gastrectomy and this is uh, told as lower radical gastrectomy so here in in uh, uh, srb in bailey and lau there were two, only two surgeries which are total gastrectomy and subtotal gastrectomy so let us learn about the total gastrectomy first and then we will learn about the subtotal gastrectomy so uh, in total gastrectomy so how do you approach first first this is the abdomen so you give an a long upper midline incision so this is an open surgery technique we don't discuss the laparoscopic techniques so here uh, we give the upper midline incision long upper midline incision so this is the first incision and then you will approach the stomach then once you approach the stomach there is a tumor which is present somewhere here right so you will dissect the whole stomach uh so you will dissect the whole stomach here and here i'll use some other tip okay mm, here uh, here okay and then remove this part of the stomach and now you have two parts uh this is the one and this is the one so you have two ends you have removed the stomach end block right i'm not going to discuss the total you know how do you do the surgery which artery you will remove what do you do all this i really don't want to discuss i'm just discussing about how do you go through the total gastric surgery you will like it you see in this you will like it all the vessels which are supplying the stomach like right like right gastric artery or left gastric artery and then gastroduodenal arteries all those will be ligated and then you will remove the part of the stomach along with removing the part of the stomach um you will also remove the omentum and the nodes which are associated with it right you'll have to remove the omentum and you'll have to remove all the nodes associated with it if the spleen you'll have to remove the spleen with splenic lymph nodes and you'll have to remove the tail of pancreas if it is associated uh, so all those which are associated with it should be removed if there is any b- bit of tumor with any of the organ those organs should be removed right okay generally we remove stomach and its omentum and the nodes associated with it if the spleen is involved then you should remove the spleen if pancreas is re- involved you you should remove the part of the pancreas which is involved right and then after you have done this what do you do then what we do is the best thing is rogs and y technique instead of directly anastomosing it normally so how do you make a rog loop so the generally you can anastomose it directly but if you anastomose it directly what generally happens see this is the esophagus this is the st- uh, duodenum all the stomach has been removed so pyloric sphincter is also removed so because of the loss of this pyloric sphincter generally uh, from the liver the bile comes out and this bile enters the duodenum and when the bile is in duodenum this bile is not reflexed back into the stomach because of pyloric sphincter which is present here but uh, here there is no pyloric sphincter so the bile directly reflexes into the esophagus and this is not good for the patient so what we do is in order to prevent bile reflux from the uh, duodenum to the esophagus we will do a surgery which is called as rox loop 
surgery rocks and y surgery it is called as y because we anastomose it in the shape of y okay let us see how we do it so uh, these are the two stumps uh, two two proximal limb and the distal limb so proximal esophagus is uh, so you so uh, you suture the distal esophagus distal uh, duodenum and you have the jejunum this is the duodenum part and this is the jejunum part so what you do is you will leave the duodenum part just like that and you will anastomose this esophagus with this jejunum okay here you have sutured you haven't sutured here so you are anastomosing this esophagus with the jejunum in such a way that this duodenum and the jejunal part should be at least 50 centimeters long so just let me draw a diagram so this is the duodenum this is now uh, some part of jejunum is taken uh, that is around uh, um, 50 centimeters which is different which is uh, that part of jejunum is taken and you have an asthmoid state with the jejunum here okay so that is what one thing which you do so you will have to attach this esophagus to the jejunum but which part of jejunum is it uh, from here or is it where so that i will explain in my next page okay because i have less page here less space here for drawing the diagram so let let us see from the beginning again so this is the stomach we have resected it here and here so there are two parts here one is the esophagus and the other is the jejunum right sorry duodenum so this is the duodenum and this is the part of the jejunum so what we do is uh, in the near the stomach so this is the diaphragm um, um, this is the duodenum duodenum is attached to the diaphragm by a ligament which is called as treats ligament so so this is the treats ligament which is attached to the uh, part of the to the duodenum and then to the diaphragm so from this treats ligament uh, you measure 75 centimeters uh, and cut it so if this is the if this is the jejunal loop so the treats ligament is attached to this to here like this to the star duodenum so you cut 75 centimeters of jejunum okay so you have cut this 75 centimeters of jejunum from the duodenum right so now you will take this jejunum and you, one end of this jejunum which is cut so this 75 centimeters this is an asthmost with the esophagus so let me draw that so this is the esophagus and this is this part of the jejunum which is an asthmost that is the 